While the M25 is essentially a transporter, the vehicle to be evacuated may be situated in an area such as these woods, where the whole unit cannot get close enough for direct loading. In such cases, the tractor truck using the tow bar is employed to pull the disabled tank to the trailer. When the tank is lined up with the trailer, the M26 is unlocked from the tow bar and again coupled to the trailer. The tow bar is removed from the tank. The trail skids are then dropped to the ground in preparation for the loading. The winch operator free spools the tandem winches. Then the winch lines are pulled out and run through the cable guide wheels and down the bed of the trailer to the tank. To prevent damage to the cables, it's important to be sure that they're running down the center of the trailer bed. Here the cables are pinned to the towing clevises. When the crew commander is satisfied that the winch lines are properly attached and the tank ready to be loaded, he signals the winch operator to winch in. The operator pulls both operating levers toward him. As the tank is being pulled toward the trailer, the crew commander must watch the operation carefully to be sure that the tank is approaching in a straight line and that the winch lines don't get fouled. Another man will be needed at the winches using a crowbar to guide the winch lines as they're being wound on the drums. The cable guide wheels on the front of the trailer allow the winching in of a load when the tractor truck is at an angle to the trailer. The crew commander signals the winch operator when the tank is in place on the trailer. While part of the crew uncouples the lines from the front of the tank, two others prepare to fasten the tank in place with ratchet chain falls. These are fastened between the towing clevises of the tank and the forward D-rings of the trailer and hold the tank in place when the unit is traveling over rough terrain or traveling up a steep grade. When the tank is secured to the trailer and the winch lines again wound in, the crew puts up the ramps and climbs aboard. And another crippled tank is on its way to be repaired and put back in service. Here's a tank that's in pretty bad shape. The entire bogey assembly is missing from one side. To load this vehicle, provision must be made to support the damaged side to allow the tank to clear the trailer tires as it's loaded. The wheel skid guards used for this operation are carried on the forward part of the trailer and are in four sections, two for each side. Four husky men using camp bars can emplace these skids. Loading tanks as badly disabled as this one is essentially the same as for those with bogies and tracks intact. The tandem winches are used on a direct pull. If the load is considered too great, two-part lines must be used. A constant watch has to be kept to see that the tank is being pulled onto the trailer straight and that the weight of the disabled side of the tank rests on the skids. The job of the M25 is to transport vehicles. And here's a crippled medium tank which must be gotten up this embankment so it can be loaded and transported to the rear for repairs. It's a tough job, but it can be done. The transporter is first positioned as near as practical to the vehicle to be loaded.
Before the tractor truck can be disconnected from the trailer, the support legs must be lowered. Then disconnect the trailer hose connections, and as the fifth wheel release handle is held in the unlocked position, the M26 can be driven out from under the trailer, which will then rest on the support legs. To pull the tank up the embankment, the tractor operates as a recovery vehicle, separate from the M15 trailer. It's back to the edge of the embankment, and the lifting device carried on the bed of the M26 is rigged for action. The line from one of the tandem winches is run through the pulley on top of the lifting device and anchored on the rear of the tractor truck. A loop of the line, which is anchored to the rear of the tractor truck, is run down to the disabled tank and through a snatch block on the front of the vehicle. Using the low range of his power takeoff, the driver starts to winch in the crippled tank. The snatch block provides the mechanical advantage of a two-part line. Other blocks can be added to increase this advantage if needed. As the tank approaches the crest of the hill, the tractor truck will probably have to be moved forward so as to allow room for the tank to come over the top. That's all there is to it, except loading the tank on the trailer. One way of unloading a tank is to pull it off with the winches. To do this, both lines are again coupled to the front of the tank and a loop of one of them pulled back underneath and passed around the master pulley. The crew commander signals the winch operator to start his winches. The line that runs through the master pulley is used to pull the tank off and the other to snub it by operating the winch for that line in reverse. Manipulating the operating lever for the snubbing winch, the winch operator keeps the tank straight as it's being pulled off. It should be mentioned that when the tank reaches the teeter point, the line that is pulling it off is stopped and gravity and the snubbing line used for the rest of the job. When the unloading is completed, the lines are uncoupled and wound back on the winch drums. And here come the mechanics to investigate the trouble on the crippled tank so that no time will be lost in getting it running again. The crew puts up the trail skids on the trailer and the transporter is ready for another job. And there she goes, the tank transporter trailer truck, M25. It's big and it's rugged. And if properly operated and maintained, it'll tackle the toughest loading and transport job and do it fast.